Hey guys, welcome back to another, uh, to my first video, actually, on <coughs> this account, and I am going to teach you how to make, make a platformer. This is the basic script platformer. I think I'm going to make two parts to this, so this is part one. Um, anyway, click create, and we'll get right into it. So, start by subscribing, and, um, also, feel free to follow my can code account. And yeah, so we are going to get into this. So, so that has just gone pulled up, and we're going to create this instead of untitled or untitled five uh, platformer. And so we're just going to make this basic platformer here. We can use the cat. That'll be fine. I'm just going to lower the size slightly, maybe uh, seventy kind of lowered it a little bit so it's kind of smaller um and yeah so let's do this i'm going to call this player this is going to be the actual thing that we move around on the ground that we're going to create called ground for now we're just going to have one level and we'll just have like a ground like this kind of a basic ground just black and everything Make sure it goes to zero, zero, or wherever it is, so it's on the ground, and that's just what we have for now. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go to the player, and I'm going to delete the my variable variable, and I'm going to create two variables. One called x velocity, for the sprite only, and one called y velocity, for the sprite only. And these are just going to be the x and the y, not the coordinates, but how much it's moving in that direction. It's just the velocity. So let's get into this. I'm going to start by having a when flat clicked block. And then I'm going to grab a forever loop. And this forever loop inside of here is going to be doing the script, but the script is going to have a lot of repeat blocks that we're going to want to go instantly. So to do that, I'm going to make a make a block block, and we're going to click the run without screen refresh. This is going to make this is what's going to make the block run instantly instead of kind of slow like the repeat blocks do. So I'm going to make the block block name um, platform uh, physics probably I guess. Um, terrible speller. Okay, okay that for now and so we have this that's going to run instantly and we want it to run instantly forever always checking in which direction it's going to be moving so we're going to have a platform physics here so it's always going to be running what's inside of here instantly so let's start by just changing y by whatever y is so y valve the variable so in whatever direction it's moving it's going to actually move that direction to start with. So if we kick the flag, nothing happens. Why? Well, because it's always changing y by y, but it's always changing y by zero because the y val variable is zero. In fact, we can check them both to see how they're kind of changing without this um, program. So now that we have this, I'm going to have a if else statement. We're going to start to see if we are touching the ground or not. So that can be easily be used by saying touching ground. If the ground is all one color like it is here, and you want to have on the ground like different color uh, spikes and stuff like that, you can actually say if touching color black or whatever color your color is. And this will do the exact same thing, uh, but it will sense any color that's black and um, if you have a different color ground, it won't know that's ground, um, even if it's on the ground sprite. So if you want it to do all the ground sprite, you can just do this touching ground block. And I think I'll do that for now. But you can do either one. Now this in this touching ground, I'm going to do a couple of things. And one of which is to repeat. I'm gonna repeat something. Well, I'm gonna repeat the absolute value which is positive 
number of what it is. So if like I had a positive seven, the absolute value of positive seven, or like I'll just check that. Uh, if it's absolute value of positive seven, it would be seven, It'd be the same. But the um, absolute value of net minus seven is just a positive value of minus seven, which is also seven. So no, it doesn't matter what number it is. It just basically takes off the minus, and if there is no minus, it just leaves the minus off. And it will just make it positive no matter what. So it doesn't matter. We're just going to leave that empty. And I'm going to grab the positive value of whatever y is. So y is 0. So the positive value of 0 is 0. So it's just going to repeat 0 for now. But that's not going to always be the case because uh, we're going to be changing the um, y value during the program. We haven't done it yet, but we will. In this repeat block, we're going to have a if touching ground so we're still making sure and we can have this touching ground or you can use this black block yeah so we're still making sure that we are um we're going to move up out of the ground or down out of the top of the ground uh kind of depending on where we are and um we're going to do that and we're going to only do it if we're touching the ground so if we're touching the ground we're going to change y by and we're going to change y by a number and what we want to do is we want to say if the um, if my y val is positive we want it to move negative one if it's negative we want it to move positive one just one it doesn't matter how far high it is basically so if that makes any sense <laughs> which it probably doesn't but it will in a second hopefully what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab a absolute value of y. So what if I just said, I'm just gonna set the y val to let's just say uh, 15. Set to 15, and I will click this button to see what the actual value is. Well, it's 15. Now, what if I made this minus 15? Well, and I'll actually have to click it to make it negative 15. We can see right here. Well, it's still 15. Now, what if we divided that by itself? Well, it's going to equal 1 any way. It's going to, no matter what, if we just did uh, this. Uh, and it doesn't matter what this number is. It's always going to equal 1. Because these numbers are always going to be the same. But what if... I just did it divided by y val. Well, this number is going to be negative 1. Because we've had a positive 15 divided by a negative 15, which is the same number, so it makes it 1. But since one of them is negative and one of them is positive, it was, is going to equal a negative, a negative number. Now, it doesn't matter what this number is. If we did 22, for instance, it's going to be a positive number. It's going to equal negative 1. Oh, no, sorry, I did not click this. So, see, the y volt is still minus 15. I'm going to click this to make it now 22, and now it's going to be 1. So, if I did minus 1, well, it's going to be minus 1. But if I did minus 100, see, we changed it, it's still minus 1. It doesn't matter if it's 2, which is above, it's going to equal 1. And that's great, but that's the opposite of what we wanted. We want, if it's positive, we want it to go negative, and if it's negative, we want it to go positive. Well, that's pretty easy to just do by timesing that number by minus 1, which is doing the exact opposite of what it is before. So it's just going to equal the opposite. Now, we can put that in here, and it will change y by that. So that's good. All right. Great. So we've gotten that already. I'm going to set the y value to 0 again, just make sure it's at 0, and since at the beginning of the program we want these to be at 0, I'm actually just going to set these to 0 at the beginning, x value and y value. And also, when we start the program, we're going to start wherever we are on the map, so I'm going to make it go to a specific place before it, uh, when, when I start the program, so I'm going to make it go about right there. Like that. Now I'm going to go there every time I start the program. And when I click this, I don't do anything. Why don't I do anything? Well, I've said if I'm touching the ground, I'm going to do that. That was in here. But I'm not touching the ground right now. So 
I'm just else, I'm not doing anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, if I'm not touching the ground, then I want to change the value in which we're going to start moving down to the ground by minus one. Like that. Now, if I click the flag, I fall. And I just want to hit the ground. I start, if I drag my cat over here, I would fall the same. Okay. So the Y value is still this. Now, why is that? It's just glitching to the ground and just falls down. And look at this number. It's minus 2,500. So if I move over here, it's always changing. And I just land like that. Well, if I'm touching the ground, we don't want it to still keep falling. I want to just set the Y value to zero. Like that. In fact, I can even put that first. I don't know if I can or not. I'm just going to do that. No. Yes. I definitely have to put it down here because I'm repeating the value up here. So. Not like that. Put them up here. Still doing that. Still doing that. Well. The reason I was doing that is because when I'm holding it, I'm not doing it fast enough. I'm not dragging my mouse fast enough. So. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to add something else. At least we know that it's falling here from this distance. Um, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to make it go to another position. So I'm just going to say, like, go to 0, 0, and then I'm going to click that, and it will fall. Um, minus 100, 0, and it will just fall. Uh, 14, it will fall. So that's good. I got that working. But I'm not dragging it fast enough is the problem. But we're never going to be dragging it in the real game, so it doesn't matter. I'm going to drag an if-else statement. And I'm going to grab a touching, or no, not touching block. A key block, key up arrow pressed. And I'm going to be checking if the key, is up, if the key up arrow is being pressed. And if it's being pressed, awesome. I'm going to move up. If it's not, then I'm going to set the Y value to zero. So, to move up, we're just going to set the Y value to a number higher than itself, like 12, uh, 10. Uh, 10, there we go. And now if I start this, and I cannot move around, but if I press the up arrow, I jump. I actually really like that. It's working pretty well. Nice. And you can change this number um, to like 15, for instance. And now we jump higher than we did before. So that's really cool. But I'm afraid. Oh, I just delete the whole block. So I'll just click undo. And I'm going to make it 10. Now that's pretty great. We've gotten on a lot so far. It's doing pretty good with our just jumping scripts, and we can move it around, and it's falling, and it's jumping, but that's pretty bad right now, I actually don't really like how it's just doing that right now, I want it to move around, and I want there to be different levels, and I want different uh, icons, and different types of things, like wall jumping, and a lot of other stuff, but unfortunately, we did not get to that in time, so in the next video, I will do the exposition, uh, so you can move left and right, and I might even be able to get to changing levels, and if not, then in the next video I will do that, changing levels and having different levels in there, and in the last episode I'll do some special effects, like um, something behind it, or something behind the cat kind of, or um, wall jumping and that kind of stuff, so awesome, um, done a lot already, so just kind of doing this is some basic uh, Y velocity and Y script. So, yeah, thank you for watching. And please remember to subscribe, follow CanCode, and, uh, yeah, click the like button. And so you will be able to see my new video. <laughs> see, see you later.